Boris Johnson's indicated he's not keen on a sugar or salt tax to curb obesity levels. Currently, here in the UK, 63% of adults are classed as overweight and one in three primary school children. The tax plan is the central proposition of a government-commissioned national food strategy. The strategy calls for a tax of £3 per kilogram on sugar and £6 per kilogram on salt, and that's sold to food companies and restaurants. The Prime Minister is concerned that such a tax would only punish poorer families. We can speak to Jason Reid on Times Radio. Jason's the founder of Young Voices UK and a public health commentator. Welcome to the programme. Thanks, Phil. Great to be with you. Um, this, I mean, we heard from Heston Blumenthal on Drive as well. It's an old issue, isn't it? It's, it's, it's a recurrent issue. And um, what's your feeling, first of all, on whether tax is the way forward? I'm relieved to hear that Boris Johnson still has at least a flicker of libertarianism in him. Um, you know, a while back, he would talk about Britain as the land of liberty. And when he was elected to leader of the Tory party, he pledged a review of the sin taxes. Obviously, that didn't materialise. And we've seen more and more nanny statism come through in the last year or two that he's been in power, most recently in this field, in the obesity policy area with the junk food advertising ban. Um, so it's good that he is initially at least resisting this uh, this proposal from Henry Dimbleby's report, the National Food Strategy, because I don't think this kind of tax ever works. All it ever does is, is make the poor poorer. Um, and we've seen from the soft drinks levy that's been in uh, that's been implemented for three years or so now, just over three years, that it doesn't affect calorie consumption. You know, when people are confronted with the fact that their sugary drink of choice costs more than it did a week ago, one of three things happens. Either they just fork out and pay the extra money, or they switch to another high sugar, high calorie alternative like fruit juices, or they just switch to a cheaper own brand version of the same drink uh, mm. in order to offset the price difference. And um, these kinds of attempts to change behaviour are outdated and they don't work. Is cost the main factor here? I mean, I, I'm constantly stunned at how cheap it is to eat rubbish. That's true, but it's, um, it, it's cheap to buy vegetables as well if you want to. I think at the heart of this issue is um, it's an issue of paternalism. It's an issue of people like Henry Dimbleby thinking that the average British person isn't capable of making their own decisions on everyday matters like what to eat for dinner. I've, I don't know Henry Dimbleby. I'm sure he's a perfectly nice person, but he is the epitome of privilege. He's David Dimbleby's son. And um, it, for people of means, it doesn't matter that a box of Frosties is going to cost 87 pence more than it did previously. But if you're a working class parent trying to feed your kids, those kinds of things add up. They make a real difference. And all this is going to do is make the weekly shopping bills for families much higher than they need to be. But you see, central to what you've just said to me is that it's not necessarily about being able to afford frosties. It's about educating people so that they know what they're putting in their mouths. I mean, I'm trying to lose weight at the moment, Jason, for example. I'm using a calorie counting app. And and the app has been revelatory to me about some of the things that I thought would be healthy to me that actually are not healthy at all. And that's really helping me to make some wiser choices. But unless you give people that level of information, I still think a lot of people I speak to, Jason, are still confused by the traffic light system, for example, on, on, on most foods. I'm, I'm with you there, Phil. I think education is very much the way forward. And I also agree that the, the traffic light system could be a lot clearer and a lot more helpful. Um, so I'm all for educating people and giving them more information. What I'm not for is uh, you know, forcing them to pay more money um, and penalising them for the, for the choices that they make with, when it comes to food. But there are some sensible proposals in the, uh, in the report that's come out today. It's extremely long, but some of the proposals are sensible. For instance, there's um, talk of improving the quality of cooking lessons that um, children get in schools. I don't know about you, but I didn't learn very much from my no, cooking same. lessons in school. I remember making a lot of bolognese and not much else. Um, so that would probably be a good thing if we can uh, increase the information and education that people receive so that they can make more informed choices. That's certainly the right way to go. Yeah. Jason, thanks for your perspective. Uh, it's really interesting and it's a complex issue. Jason Reed, founder of Young Voices UK and public health commentator at